Democratic Congressman Jamie Raskin of Maryland serves with Jim Jordan on the House Oversight Committee, where he's the ranking member, and he joins me now. Um, Jim Jordan, right temperament to be Speaker of the House, Congressman? Well, Jim Jordan is uh, polemical and pugilistic and combative um, in committee. Um, we shouldn't kid ourselves because he's not without uh, talent and a certain kind of rhetorical flair. Um, mm -hmm. He's got a tragic flaw, which is that because of his natural authoritarianism, he loves to cover up and apologize for men in power who abuse their power to vicious ends. And he did that um, with the sexual abuser uh, on the wrestling team uh, back in Ohio. And of course, he has devoted his career recently to covering up all of the constitutional crimes and offenses and outrages committed by Donald Trump. Um, and I don't quite know what, you know, that psychological characteristic is that drives him to do that, but he has a real penchant for defending people who take power and abuse it. And it's not a good sign. Um, he is not any kind of real budget deficit hawk. He gladly votes for continuing resolutions. Um, and so he, he really is a right-wing authoritarian culture warrior who mirrors Donald Trump in his basic temperament and political commitments. Yeah, I mean, the fact that Trump, he's been endorsed by Trump and, and Gates now, and, and, and there, we got some new reporting today that back at the original election of Speaker, the one that went through 15 ballots for Kevin McCarthy, that, that Trump was toying the idea of running for, for it himself, um, that, that he, uh, he saw the power of television, a close Trump advisor told me. He saw how galvanizing it was, how mesmerizing it was. Everybody was watching it, right? That's when Trump realizes it's the biggest reality show in America. He could sit up there like Celebrity Apprentice. It'd be The Apprentice with him with a big-ass gavel. This, this, to me, sort of captures the problem and is not unrelated to Jim Jordan's appearances on Fox and not unrelated to the, the motion to dismiss by Matt Gates, and not unrelated to the entire democratic crisis we find ourselves in, which is the incentives for these folks seem wildly misaligned. Well, yeah, I mean, it's all about ego for the ones who get into office. There's no political program. There's no mission for the country. Trump, according to one Republican who spoke to me about it off the record, was actually deeply interested in running for speaker, but he was blocked both by Republican Party rules, which say that you can't run if you are currently under indictment for a felony that would land you in jail for two years or more, which is a nice touch for their uh, rules. I like that. Um, but he's also barred, of course, by Section 3 of the 14th Amendment of the Constitution, which says if you've sworn an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution and violated it by engaging in insurrection or rebellion, you shall never be allowed to hold federal or state office again. And uh, the speakership, although it's not confined to members of Congress, is nonetheless a federal office, and I think he would be barred from it. But the problem is exactly what you were saying, Chris, which is that, look, what do you have in Congress today? We've got 212 Democrats who are unified, focused, and we got a program for the country. Then you've got an extreme mega wing, which uh, Matt Gates uh, exemplifies, which is literally taking orders on the phone from Donald Trump, like shut down the government to shut down my prosecutions. Then you've got around 185 or 190 right-wing Republicans, many of whom call themselves MAGA, but they basically are willing to do whatever the MAGA terrorist wing, as you put it, um, is demanding. And so they're willing to go with it. But there's still about a dozen moderate critical thinking Republicans left. And those are the people that we're desperately trying to reach out to, to say, um, can you support Hakeem Jeffries, who is a principled, effective, efficient leader for speaker? And we will put the House and the country back on a firm course. And if they can't do that, I don't know. Maybe we could talk about Liz Cheney. We could talk about some other people who would be Republicans if they can't bring themselves to vote for a Democrat. But we know there are around a dozen Republicans who are appalled by the authoritarian direction of their caucus. Yeah, and there, I mean, again, I, I think the, to me, the sort of disqualifying vote, although Kevin McCarthy took the same vote as did Steve Solis, if I'm not mistaken, he did, um, it, it is that vote on, you know, on January 6th. I mean, to, to, to be in that chamber, to watch what happened, to watch what the president did, 
And they, everyone was there. You guys were all there, right? The, the, the cops getting their heads bashed in, the president painting a target on his vice president, uh, the, the not sending the crowd home, to be taken to safety and then come back into that building that had been so desecrated and rampaged and vote for the coup, as a majority of those members did, I mean, that to me is a, that, that's a disqualifying vote <laughs> to be Speaker of the House. Now, we already well, passed that because you got Kevin McCarthy, but... Well, that's what was so astounding about McCarthy. He literally placed a call to Donald Trump from his office, which was being besieged and ransacked, begging him to call off that's the right. mob. And everybody knows Trump's response was, well, maybe they just care a little bit more about a fair election than you do, Kevin. And yet, even though he knew to call Donald Trump, who was the mastermind of the whole thing, to call it off, he could not bring himself to join Liz Cheney, who was the number three person in the Republican hierarchy to vote to impeach Donald Trump, even though right. he said on the floor that Trump was responsible. And then, of course, um, you know, his caving into Trump only intensified Ed, after that. You know, he went down to Mar-a-Lago and kissed the ring. And then uh, after the gavel changed hands, he, of course, turned over the security tapes to Fox News so they could continue to promote, you know, whatever their conspiracy theory du jour yeah. was. Yeah, I mean, everyone, Kevin McCarthy, uh, Jim Jordan should talk to, should, should place a call. Uh, you should talk to Kevin McCarthy. He should place a call to Jeff Sessions tonight. See how it went to hit your wagon to the, <laughs> to the Trump train. See how he ended up in the end. Just, just make a call. Uh, Jamie Raskin, Congressman from Maryland. Always a pleasure to have you. Thank you, sir.